Apologies. So, instead of playing the men, um, they, the hypocrisy, what I've just heard from those opposite, is breathtaking. On the one hand, they're saying that the government and the Attorney General is besmirching the reputation of the President of the Human Rights Commission simply because she's a woman. But in the same breath, they're doing it by absolutely besmirching, besmirching the reputation of the Secretary of the Attorney General's Department, who absolutely is a man of total integrity and respect. Uh, but if that's not enough, um, this morning I was Order. delighted to rise and speak in support of the Attorney General on the censure motion. And what I pointed out is the very uncomfortable truths for those, oppos you know, those opposite. I went into the hearings last week with the Human uh, Rights Commissioner and the Commission staff wanting the answers to two very simple questions I thought that had not been clear. The first is, when did they decide to have this inquiry? And as I said previously, I came up with four distinct separate answers over the space of 12 months. Not exactly the clarity you would expect from those who are giving evidence. But then, why they decided to have the inquiry? There were seven separate answers, and at least four of them on the same page of Hansard that were contradictory. So not only were those two key questions that I think every taxpayer, not just those in government, deserve to have answered, when did they decide to hold the inquiry and why did they decide to hold it? And so I said not only were those not answered, but Somewhat amazingly, the Human Rights Commission staff, including the President, then raised two completely new different reasons for holding the inquiry. So there was a, a range of reasons in the testimony in November. The clarificatory statements in December clarified the November advice, and then the opening statement also made a number or provided a number of reasons of why the inquiry was held. But then somewhat extraordinarily, in the evidence on the day, Operation Sovereign Borders popped up its head and as a completely new reason for having the inquiry, which had never been mentioned before. But not only did Sovereign Borders come up, it changed four times. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. And almost all of those were in the course of one page of Hansard. Hard. So there's the third question that now needs to be answered that wasn't answered in the seven hours of testimony. But even more extraordinarily, in my mind, was not only did Operation Sovereign Borders poke its head up, but the issue initially was raised by uh, the President that it was Operation Sovereign Borders that resulted in a drying up of information to the Commission. Well, guess what? That evidence changed seven times as well over the course of the testimony from the Human Rights Commission, seven times by my count. And not only did it change, but it then transpired that it was a drying up of information for sovereign borders, and then it wasn't. Then it went back to caretaker period, then it went back to before caretaker period, then it went back to sovereign borders, and then it went back to caretaker period and back and forwards in the course of a single minute, a single day of testimony. So by my reckoning, instead of just having two key questions to answer, why was it called and when was it called, we've now got two whole new <laughs> questions to pursue. Nothing would give me greater pleasure if, when the Human Rights Commission reappears before the Estimates Committee, we get very simple and very clear answers to those questions. And until we get those questions, it is not a matter of playing the Commission or the Commissioner. But this is a taxpayer-funded organisation, and there were many things the Commission could have inquired into in the human rights of Australians. We've got a review on it at the moment of young people in nursing homes, Order. You know, Senator, domestic your violence, time has and why was this 